Hello YouTube, this is Robert Ness 816 and I'm coming at you with another video. As promised, I'm making a comparison video with the uh, Rockwell T2 against all of the Gillette adjustables. I'm going to try and cover all of the commonly available Gillette adjustables in this video. None of the uncommon ones like your toggle, your bottom dial, you know, whatever else might be out there that Gillette made up out there. Um, you know, your a red dot fat boy that's like really uncommon just your average readily available you go on ebay buy them and you can have them delivered to your door gillette adjustables that don't cost an arm and a leg so the fat boy and uh, slim adjustable both of them are very common for some reason the prices on these two have gone up a lot probably because of youtube reviewers uh, basically blowing them out of proportion and making them into something that they're not. They're good everyday shavers. They're very easy to find. There's probably millions of them still out there. Then you have the Black Beauty as they're called. Black Beauty. Um, you have the Super 84, Super 109, and a Super Adjustable. All three of these again are super duper common, readily available can't complain about them so first I'm just gonna talk about the Rockwell T2 again and uh, we'll just kind of show you what I have done with this razor which is simply used it a lot and as you can see it has soap scum on it it has fingerprints all over it I did not clean this razor up because I wanted to show that I use this razor quite a bit and this is my most used safety razor out of the bunch I do clean it up with a towel after every use so that's why you see like soap scum on the sides and just kind of towel marks here because I can't really clean it up from there so the Weishi razor that I compared this to I actually returned because that razor uh, as I showed you in the last video had that defect with the bottom plate where it would not adjust correctly it would always be crooked and stuff and it, would, it, it got to a point where it was pretty annoying so um, yeah I just basically returned it so for 30 bucks I mean you know it wasn't too bad but uh, the, the problem that the Chinese have is they always they always manage to screw something up so it's like if you make something in China and you have like whatever supervision from whatever company it is making that product and the pro the products aren't that bad if you have something completely made in china where it's designed manufactured managed all that shit you're going to end up with something that has some type of glaring flaw somewhere that they could have fixed but they're like whatever we don't care and that's the issue with uh, cheap labor is that they just don't care so this, even though it is made in China, unfortunately, it is, a, I believe it's a Canadian company, Rockwell. Um, this should be made in Canada for all intents and purposes, especially for the price that it's selling for. I mean, they could take all the molds that they made and just ship them over to the U.S. and just have it made, or not to the U.S., to Canada, or to the U.S., whatever, who else, you know, whoever wants a job, and just ship it here for the prices that they're charging anyway for this thing. So, 150 bucks for this razor. Uh, I got it for 20% off, and um, it is a good razor. It is a well-made razor. As I mentioned in the last video, you can get a defective Rockwell T2, just like you can get a defective Weishi. You're, more, you're much more likely to get a defective Weishi than this razor is, however. So, yeah. As far as how this thing shaves, though, this is a really nice shaving razor. Um... It does not shave like the vintage razors do, but it is actually uh, very forgiving. It is a very nicely balanced razor. As I showed you last time, I believe the balance point was right around here. Actually, yes, I'm holding it right here as the balance point. So it is pretty much perfectly balanced as far as I would consider a safety razor to be. It is not head heavy or handle heavy, so it is pretty much right there where you would hold it. Um, the TTO mechanism I complained about because when it's new these are really stiff so once you get a few dozen shaves though it actually loosens up quite a bit and becomes a very nice uh, razor to use and then of course the head I complained about with how wide it was and I believe Rockwell was doing that just to kind of 
I guess, cover themselves for maybe any possible lawsuits or anything, because I know people are kind of dopey today in terms of uh, common sense and stuff. I mean, you have the side of the blade there. It's really hard to cut yourself on dull steel, but I guess people can figure it out, right? Who knows? So I guess that's why they want it to cover it up. But the downside is, is that that makes the head pretty wide, much wider than what it needs to be, unfortunately. Uh, and then also with the fact that the head is made out of Zamic, I think it also is taller and thicker than what it needs to be as well because the uh, Zamic material is not as durable or strong, rather as uh, how strong uh, brass is. So that's, you know, maybe a downside. That's also a fact of manufacturing too because these are not mass produced in the same sense that these Gillettes were where there's literally millions and millions of them made. So I'll show you the fat boy because people always like, oh, the fat boy, that's the one you have to go after. So here it is. This is, I think it's a 1957 fat boy, 57 or 56, I believe, or maybe 55. I don't remember the date codes on the bottom. It's, uh, what is this one? E4. So whatever E4 is, I'll put the date codes and stuff like that in the uh, description. But anyway, so this is a Gillette Fat Boy. Here it is against the Rockwell T2. And you can see how much narrower the head is. And uh, this makes a big difference when shaving under the nose and stuff. Is this even in focus? No, because I'm using a wide angle lens. There we go, now it'll focus. So you can see how much wider the head is here when I compare them. So basically the entire area of the fat boy is being used for cutting whereas the t2 they have it covering up the entire blade and then some which is a shame unfortunately because it just makes shaving under the nose a little bit more difficult you kind of have to go up and down with the t2 i should be doing that with this one up and down with the t2 to uh really get under the nose there whereas with the fat boy and all the other Gillettes you can basically do it sideways and you know really get closer but um yeah so you can see just looking at the two of them side by side I'll go back to the wide lens and uh not much of a size difference there there is a difference in heft between the two the new one has a little bit more heft to it compared to this one um this razor is, like I said, 100% mass produced. Everything on it is nice and stamped brass. So there is no um, Zamic on this razor at all. It is entirely made out of brass. It is entirely stamped. It is entirely perfect from a manufacturing standpoint. That is the one thing that Gillette had is perfection a little teeny bit of brassing on this one but that's okay because it's brass and as long as you keep it clean it's more or less just a minor cosmetic issue that i'm not going to worry about so this is perfection look at that doors open up nice and evenly and there you go and you got a nice little quarter turn lock so you know for sure when it's locked it doesn't just abruptly stop see that's awesome. And then you get nice little click adjustments here, which I kind of wish that the Rockwell had, but instead it has a kind of like a friction ring dealie where it's, um, you know, I guess set there. Uh, let's see. So this one, when you close down the TTO mechanism, it just kind of abruptly stops like that so you kind of know it's there but then you have the adjustment and it just where is it? there it is so it's like kind of like a friction ring so you have like infinite adjustments with this razor so six is the most aggressive and then you just kind of go down let me just try there we go get that angle right and then you just kind of go down so the nice thing about the t2 compared to the wishi is for example that you don't have to loosen up the blade to adjust it which is also true for the Fat Boy and all the other ones where you can have the blade basically tightened down all the way too and you can pretty much adjust it as you wish. So right there is one is its most mild and then you can just kind of go up from there to nine. So how does this razor shave compared to the 
T2, so the T2 is, I think, more forgiving as far as that goes. Um, this one just has, I think, kind of like a broader angle where you will feel the blade cutting. Um, easier to learn on. This one is also easy to use, but when you get up to the higher settings, though, you get more uh, blade feel with this one, especially past like five, for example, which I don't really like shaving past five. You get more blade feel. Um, it gets aggressive, but not like super aggressive. There's not really anything super aggressive in the uh, newer Gillette lineup, like past the 1950s. Everything kind of got more or less mild. You still get a nice smooth shave, but it's not going to be to the point where you're going to like, you know, hack your face up or anything like that. So, very nice shaving razor, nice wide handle on it. Good heft to it, not crazy. Um, very good grip on it too. That's one thing that Gillette had perfected here was their hand grip. And that's what I love here. The knurling on this with the lines, it feels so good. This is a razor where you'll, you'll never have it like slip out of your hands ever. So definitely an awesome shaving razor. One that I don't use enough, but it is still really cool. So, and of course these came in a very nice little hard case as well, which isn't super common, but yeah. And then I do have a brand new pack of uh, Gillette Super Blue Blades. I pulled this right out of the uh, packaging so I can actually use these blades if I want to. I have used these blades in the past. They're not too bad. You just have to actually clean off the oil on them too because the oil from being like 60 years old tends to um, I guess harden up on there so it kind of ruins the shaving experience if you try to pull one of those out of the blade holder and actually try to use it. Um, also being carbon steel they rust up pretty easily if you don't dry them off. So that is the fat boy. So pretty cool razor. Set that one aside and then we'll go up to the slim adjustable. So everything about Gillette was cutting corners as time progressed. And uh, so here is a nice example of a slim adjustable. This is a 1964 slim adjustable, I believe. There's no brassing on this one at all. It's basically perfect really good condition on this one all of these I picked up for relatively cheap eBay has a lot of expensive prices on things but I mean for this one I paid I think 30 bucks for the fat boy I paid I think 60 so I mean you know you can get reasonable good deals if you go to like antique shops and stuff like that so this one a little bit slimmer I do believe that this is what Rockwell modeled their uh, T2 after you can see it's kind of a very similar design. I'm pretty sure that this is what they kind of were going for. So the Slim Adjustable is a better shaving razor compared to the uh, Fat Boy. And that's mainly because the head design is slimmer. Um, the blade angles for geometry is a little bit better. On more aggressive settings, I think it's a better shaving razor than the Fat Boy is. Um, it's just smoother. There's a little bit less blade feel. And I think it's just overall it's a more pleasing razor to use. The downside though is that the handle is not as wide, so it's just not, um, maybe not as, uh, I don't know, I, I, I guess easy to grip for some people maybe. For me, I don't really have an issue because it has that same type of uh, handle pattern there as the Fat Boy has with the grooves in here on the lines. So basically it's a very nice grippy solid uh, razor very nice balance too which the fat boy also has where the balance point on these razors is uh, right around here usually let's see if I can find out where it is on this thing yeah so this one's right around where the adjustment dial is as my finger shakes the fat boys right around there too so I think the the actual balance point on the uh, T2 is better though because it's right around here, so which is where you would hold it. So, but yeah, basically a perfectly made, mass produced product. And uh, definitely something that is awesome. I wish companies could, you know, you have a nice quarter turn lock as well. There's that. That's when you know it's locked. 
And the same thing too, you can make adjustments on this razor too, on the fly, if you need to. They say you should loosen up the handle too if you need to make adjustments on it, which takes a lot of stress off of the adjustment mechanism. You can do that too if you want. But I mean like really when you're talking about adjustable razors, basically you just kind of pick a setting and leave it at that. It's not really... You don't have to kind of work your way up or down the scale every time you use it. It's adjustable because it's basically designed to be uh, kind of like an all-in-one razor. Like you have one setting that you find that works for you and then you just kind of stick with it. Or if you have a, you know, longer hair or whatever, you can set it up for a, uh, a more aggressive setting. But for the most part, you just find a setting you like and you stick with it. So that's the slim adjustable. Um, it does compare to the Rockwell T2 in how it shaves. It's um, a little bit more forgiving, I think, than a Fat Boy is, especially on more aggressive settings, as I, as I mentioned. Uh, there's the hair. But, um, yeah, definitely a nice safety razor. And there's the case that it comes in, not as nice as the Fat Boys. This one has like a spring adjustment mechanism or a spring open mechanism on it where you can see how it kind of opens up and this one does not have that this one has just kind of like basic hinges on it and stuff and yeah and by this point we did have stainless steel safety razor blades that were uh, coming with these not this particular pack you were getting I think a two pack of, uh, ra of safety razor blades that came with these so and these also came in a crap ton of different colors with different colored uh, inserts. So that's the slim adjustable. I'll put it over there. And then we're moving on to the two most common razors in Gillette's lineup. So we have the Super 84 and Super 109. So these two were around for pretty much the same amount of time, actually no, not really, this one was around from the 60s until the, I want to say the early 70s, and then this one took over basically, and it was replaced by the super adjustable later on. So these razors were a different um, manufacturing process, these had a, once again, a cheaper case to get rid of the hinge altogether, and they went with this kind of uh, tray that kind of works for both safety razors the 109 and the 84 this is a blade pack from the early 90s so this is not what would have come with this razor you would have gotten a uh, blade uh, pack that would have come basically like that one where it was a spoiler on it this was still the 1960s with this one so this is the super 84 84 millimeter handle very similar size to the uh, Gillette slim except you have a yet again revised blade geometry on this one this one shaves pretty much like a modern day razor these are actually really popular the super 84 109 and super adjustable so these have a entirely brass head with an aluminum handle so the aluminum handle was designed to cut costs and in doing so they kind of threw off the blade balance here because now it is a head heavy razor so that moves the balance point up to let's see is it still on where the adjustment part is no it's a little bit higher yeah so it's a little bit higher than the slim so basically when you're shaving with this one you kind of feel the weight of the head does that affect how the razor shaves no not really it affects how you kind of handle it um in the hand you know it's you can feel it's kind of got a little bit more weight in the head but whatever as far as how it shaves compared to the uh, slim adjustable, I think this one actually shaves a little bit nicer. Um, the downside is these are just not as durable as the uh, slim adjustable is because the aluminum handle, unfortunately over time, the powder coating on some of them tends to, uh, to rub off. Um, you do get pitting from the inside out with these too. So like, say if you had someone here that didn't really take care of the, their razor too well, you can see how this one's kind of got a little bit of uh, brassing showing on the edges. So if someone didn't take care of their razor too well and they allowed soap scum to build up inside, 
the uh, razor would corrode from the inside out and also your uh, bottom cap on this razor has a little pinhole whereas on the other ones it was completely exposed so basically uh, moisture didn't really have that um, easy of a time uh, you know getting its way out of the razor which is unfortunate so but once again you have that quarter turn lock which I love then you can adjust the razor the same as you would with all the other ones where you have that kind of twist and you do have actually larger numbers too on the adjustment dial as well so this razor on its higher settings though I think is a better shaving razor than the um, slim adjustable and a fat boy let me try to zoom in sorry um, I think you definitely have revised blade geometry on this one even on its highest setting it's actually a pretty nice shaving razor it does get uh, more aggressive than the slim and a fat boy though but again the uh, the way how the blade geometry is set up though it, it is actually pretty nice so that's on setting nine and yeah so nice slim head on this one and then once again that perfection that Gillette had here the way how the door is open and stuff and also with these two I noticed that the uh, um, nickel plating is a little bit shinier too than the older razors so maybe that was another improvement that they had so this one is a uh, what is this one this is a s1 made in USA so a nice shaving razor and then we have the more common super 109 so people definitely uh, preferred the longer handle over the shorter handle razors apparently and it is a nicer shaving razor especially with the aluminum handle too it gives you excuse me gives you more to kind of like hold on to and stuff so it is a nicer shaving razor i think than the super 84 was unfortunately because the extra uh, length of the handle here just give it a little bit better balance and uh we can see if it's let's see all right, so you can see the balance point is actually back a little bit further compared to the Super 84. So a nicer shaving razor. Identical head geometry compared to the uh, Super 84, so pretty much the same thing. So I'll throw this one back in there because you already saw it. And then we will look up the last but not least, the Black Beauty or Super Adjustable. So this one is from 1978, and this is when Gillette was uh, being their cheapest. So this blister pack is basically your retail packaging and also your blade holder. Before with these, these came in a blister pack which went over the uh, case here, and then it was had a cardboard backing, of course, where it would be hung up on a hook. This one, however, they got rid of the hard case and incorporated the actual razor holder into the blister pack itself to cut costs and then they raised the price I believe another two dollars on top of that I think this was selling for at the time I want to say two dollars and then this was selling for I believe three dollars and change so it's still super cheap compared to today but you can see where uh, things were going at that point so this is the blade holder that it would have come with at the time Gillette Platinum Plus these are actually nice shaving blades too if you have the chance to find brand new ones not old ones that are sitting around so this one they went to a plastic base plate which actually made the razors balance perfect again and right there oops put it back right there is where you want the balance to be right there where you're holding it so actually a benefit to having plastic for once and as you can see same aluminum handle same knurling and yeah these I actually like over the super 109 
different base plate. They went to a uh, rectangular base plate and the date code is inside Z4. So this one I got lucky with because it's basically brand new and I paid next to nothing for it. I actually got this in a package deal for like ten dollars <laughs> with two of them with the case and everything so I can't complain to that and it's pretty much perfect as you can see you can't ask for better than that this is like pretty much out of the box brand new you still have that quarter turn lock on it of course and then when you adjust it let's see same thing as before one through nine same thing so excellent shaving razor this is my favorite of the uh, super adjustable lineup and then after that and I believe 1980 Gillette switched to a regular knurling handle standard diamond shaped knurling to get rid of this kind of uh, patterns knurling design that I actually like a lot better the standard uh, diamond shaped knurling I'm sure was another way for them to cut corners and make the razors cheaper to produce and uh, with that Gillette discontinued their safety razors and I believe 1988 or 89 um, because at that point the Gillette Atra and Gillette Sensor line came out and that was pretty much cleaned the floor with safety razors people jumped on that lineup like you would not believe so that's my little comparison video here to the Rockwell T2 versus Gillette Super Adjustable lineup. So you can spend 150 on one of these and not have to worry about finding a vintage one, or you can spend next to nothing on one of these. Or if you want to, you can cough up the money if you want for whatever someone's asking and pay, you know, maybe 60, 70, 100 bucks for one of these if someone's selling it for that much and if it's in actually like brand new condition otherwise though you know you can just buy something new with a warranty or take a chance on something old without a warranty or you can get a revamped one from like back roads gold or razor emporium or whatever at which point you'll be saying be paying the same price or more for uh something that's basically old but completely revamped and uh fixed up so in my opinion i kind of do prefer the vintage ones over the rockwell t2 mainly because of the head as i mentioned i'm gonna hold them upside down because why not the narrower head design on the newer razors is very nice and rockwell did try their best to get the head i guess as compact as possible but instead they kind of copied the uh, fat boy which is my least favorite. I would have preferred it if they copied this one. Very similar though in terms of their height. But the uh, length though, that's the thing. I wish they would have just... I mean you might as well just copy Gillette at that point because th this is, you hold them side by side. I'm seeing so many similarities right now. But um yeah, I mean, I wish it was the same width as the Gillette's, because otherwise, you know, I wouldn't even bother making a comparison. I would just say that the T2 is as good as the vintage Gillette stuff, which it is, but just the width of the head is what kills it for me. I wish they were the same width. So if there's ever a Rockwell T3, if Rockwell's listening, make it the same width, please. Just do that. So, yeah. Anyways, that's my comparison. Thanks for watching.